I'm on the last mini sermon on the book of Colossians chapter 1, and I'm on verse 28 and 29. Let me read you these verses. It goes like this. Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ, that this I toil, struggling with all his energy, that he powerfully works within me. Now, the purpose of Paul, he's talking about Christ. That's the whole purpose of chapter one, the greatness of Christ. But it's not just something you think about, something you hold in your head. It's about having people both warned, admonished, taught to be um, presented mature in Christ. Now, what does that look like? I wanted to end this series with a very, very um, heartfelt situation that is occurring in the United States at this time. And that is the huge uptick and rash of uh, anti-Asian hate in America. What do we do about it as believers? How do we present believers mature in Christ in the midst of this crisis? Now, perhaps some of you are not aware of this. Well, generally in America, hate crimes, I, I read someplace that has, statistically has gone down 7% across America. But amongst Asians, it has increased 149%. That's crazy gone down nationally, but up 149% amongst Asians. And especially in the Bay Area, you're always hearing almost every day of some elderly Asian being a pushed or beaten or sucker punched. Uh, Oakland, San Francisco, the worst city is New York City, has gone over 800% in hate crime. The Bay Area, if you include San Jose and San Francisco, is the second largest urban area that has uh, Asian hate. Now, what do we do about it as believers? What do we do about it as Christians? The first pers uh, passage I want uh, us to have a, take a look at is found in uh, the book of Luke, chapter 18. And it's a very interesting uh, passage it's actually originally taught in the context of prayer, but Jesus uses a very interesting analogy in this parabolic teaching. Luke chapter 18, verse 2, and he said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a certain widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, Give me justice against my adversary. For a while he refused, but afterward he said to himself, Though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her her justice, so that she will not beat me down by uh, her continually coming. Now what this passage tells us is that uh, it's, it's important to always um, vocalize your need for justice and to keep on doing it. See, oftentimes we, we as believers, oh, you know, just, just turn the other cheek and things like that. Or, or especially as, as Asian Christians, you know, as part of our perhaps upbringing, not, not to make us a, a, a big stink about things. But there's one of the problems. Oftentimes we let injustice occur to minorities and different people's groups. And this is one of the problems in America. In terms of doing one thing, people take advantage of you. And what Asian Americans need to do and all Christians who are oppressed need to seek penal justice from society and to do it and do it continuously and do it vocally. This woman gets justice because she keeps coming and we need to do that on behalf of, 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 of different minority groups, uh, African Americans who are uh, always seen uh, as someone who is a... Uh, given a, an unfair shake in American society, speak up for them, and also get, uh, for the Asian American. This past Sunday, I went to um, a Stop Asian Hate Rally in San Jose uh, Sunday afternoon, and it was really good to see about 700 to 1,000 Asian Americans uh, rally. We need to do this more even as believers, because it's a part of common grace and it's part of defending people 
who are being taken advantage of at this time. A second passage I want to read is found in the book of Matthew. Well, it's actually the, uh, Matthew, yeah, chapter 23. It goes like this. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like washed, whitewashed tombs with, which outwardly appear beautiful, but within are full of dead people's bones and are all uncleanness. So you also outwardly appear righteous to others, but within you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Now, I want to call out the evangelical church in America. Now, how in the world can I call them out? I am self, I myself is an evangelical. But I want to call out the fact that evangelicalism in America often stages its inclusiveness of minorities because ultimately evangelicalism in America is dominated by non-minorities. Oh, sure, we'll have minorities, one here, one there. But it's all for looks and all the power of all the major institutions, organizations. It's all run by non-minorities. But they want to have a look that we are inclusive. Even the Bay Area, I see this. It's supposed to be this really great progressive area. I see it as a sort of reflection of the uh, sort of uh, covert racism that still infest evangelical churches and evangelical institutions. Just look at your church, look at the seminaries, look at the uh, Christian organizations. Who's the leader? Where are the minorities? Is there just one? Are they in places of prominence? Are they truly representative of the people in the congregation? Or is the power only held by non-minorities. I'll call out this hypocrisy because it is wrong in Jesus Christ. It's fake, you're trying to fool people. It's not real. The third passage I wanna bring up is found in the book of James, chapter three. And it's in the context of the tongue. It goes like this, uh, verse uh, five, and I think I read six, so also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is a blaze, uh, set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. Words we say can incite and inflame a society. And this is really important in terms of the hate, especially the Asian American hate that is going around at this time. I hear hateful words from both the right and the left. When President Trump was calling the uh, COVID, the Chinese virus, you know, the China virus, you know, I, I know he, he was uh, having a lot of friction with uh, the Chinese government, but he didn't realize what an effect it would have upon the Asians living in his own country. Uh, this is not good. This was a very unrighteous thing, very unwise thing. You don't want to use that type of inflammatory language. But it's not only on the right, it's on the left. This past week, there was a, 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 one of the, I, I guess, a, a heads of the education uh, department in San Francisco who in a 2016 uh, sort of, uh, I don't know if it was a tweet or, or a text message, was describing Asian Americans as house N-word. Oh, that, that's really bad. This is San Francisco, you know? Both from the right and from the left, looking down upon Asians. You know, you got, you got to cut that out. It's not right. And it's not just one group of people doing it. You're getting it from all sides. The final thought I want to leave with this, and I'm very passionate about this because I'm Asian and I want to really bring attention to the plight that is occurring now uh, in our midst, is that a believer, we also realize that no true justice and no true lasting change will ever occur without the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ into our own lives 
and for his second coming into this world. For you know what? Yeah, there's a lot of hate in this world against minorities, against women, against the poor, against people of other countries. And we try to do our best to um, bring forth a, a civility and a justice in the midst of this hatred and injustice. But in reality, we need to wait for our Lord Jesus Christ. Do what we can now, but realize it's a systemic problem within humanity itself that needs the grace of Jesus and the redemption and the judgment that he will bring when he comes again.